Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Automotive Diagnosis YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to focus on lean network or local interconnect network uh, to see uh, what is lean network, where you can find it on the car and how it works. So uh, we already have a couple of other videos about the network, uh, mostly uh, on Canvas. And after publishing those videos, I received many uh, messages and comments uh, to make a video about the Lean Network as well. So that's why today uh, I'm making this video for uh, you guys. First of all, we will start by having a look at the network, Lean Network Basic. Normally, when we are talking about the Lean Network, you guys are supposed to know where to find it. So I'm going to show you some really good examples uh, about the Lean Network on the wind diagram and a couple of experiences uh, as well. So you, 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 you will, at the end of this video, uh, you will know uh, the application of the Lean Network. Then uh, after having a look at the power window and power seat application, uh, we will continue by having a look at the parking assist system to see how Lean Network is used in parking assist system. Then we will uh, have wiper and the rain sensor because Lean has been used on wiper and rain sensor as well. And the last one is going to be the headlights. So uh, we, we are going to focus on the main subjects and main systems, and it doesn't mean that uh, you, you, you will not find Lean Network in other uh, systems as well. But these are the major and main components using Lean Network. And if you uh, watch this video and if you know how Lean works, obviously it's going to be super easy to find the Lean Network in the other systems just by having a look at the uh, wiring diagram. All right. Uh, so as I said earlier, uh, we have... A couple of other videos for the CAN bus. I will leave the link of those videos in the description uh, so you can watch the CAN bus structure and diagnostics uh, video as well. But basically, uh, when we have the network in the car, uh, uh, I'm just giving you really, really quick uh, idea about the network. Then we will see why do we need to have a lean network. So basically, network is designed to minimize the need for having the wiring because you see uh, all these control units you may have even more than these control units on one car so it means when you have so many control units and when they are communicating to each other you need to have so many wires and wiring harnesses in the car so having more wiring uh, i'm not really worried about the uh, cost side i'm just worried about the diagnostic side when you have so many wiring, it means you may have so many problems. Connectors or the wirings, they are normally the source of the problems. So companies are using the network to minimize the wiring and the wiring harnesses. This is the first one. And on the other hand, using the network is going to give this ability to the companies to share the information between the control units at higher speeds. Right? Because when, when you are using a normal hard wire, so uh, control units are sending the signals as usual, just the voltage or whatever they are sharing to each other. But now, when they are using the network, information will be shared at really high speed. For example, here on high speed CAN, all these control units are connected to high speed CAN. So they will share the information using this network. And the speed that we are using in the high speed CAN can reach to one megabit per second so it's going to be way higher higher than uh, the normal hard wiring and on the lowest bit can that normally we call it body can you see uh, some other control units like the driver door module assist door module uh, power seat and a couple of other things uh, other uh, control units they are sharing the information at lower speed but it's still it's uh, it's not comparable to a normal hard wire because in low speed can we can reach up to 125 kilobit per second which is a still really good speed 
So when you see these two uh, classes of CAN right now, you see those control units which are really critical, like engine, uh, brake system, transmission. So these are really sensitive, really critical. We need to send the information uh, and we need to share the information between these control units as quickly as possible. That's why we are using uh, the high speed CAN. But the other control units right here in the body CAN, they are less critical. All right. So it doesn't mean that they, their information is not important at all. Of course it is. But this information is not as critical as uh, this information in the units in high speed CAN. So that's why we are, when we are using the lowest speed CAN, we are still using the network, but we will have uh, less speed compared to the high speed CAN. So uh, when obviously you are using less speed, uh, the total cost of uh, creating these control units is going to be less than the high speed one. But is there any need for sharing other information? Yes, of course. Of course there is. So we already know about the low speed CAN and high speed CAN. But sometimes there are some other components, mostly some sensors. They need to communicate uh, with uh, these control units connected to the B CAN or to the high speed CAN, right? So it means if we have other components which are even less critical than these control units in the low speed CAN, instead of using this kind of network, instead of using the CAN network, we're going to move to another network, which we call it lane network. So in the CAN bus, if you watch the other video in the description, you see that the CAN bus is using a pair of twisted wires. So it means you have two wires which are twisted to each other in the CAN network. And the speed that you reach is uh, one megabit per second in high speed CAN and 125 kilobit per second in low speed CAN. But if you have any other component uh, which needs to send the information, which needs to share the information, less critical as low speed can, but still you are trying to share the information uh, faster than the normal hardwire, we can move on to another network which is less critical and which is going to cost way less than low speed can. So that one is lean network. So lean uh, is the abbreviation of local interconnect network, local interconnect network. And in the lane network, we are using only one wire, only one wire, not two wires anymore like the CAN network. There is just one wire to communicate. So normally you can find the lane network in these systems and obviously more. So I've seen the lane network in sunroof, uh, in the power door lock system, in headlight that we will see uh, today, in power seat, uh, in the wiper and rain sensor, and sometimes in parking assist systems. And obviously, as I said earlier, in uh, some other uh, systems as well. So let's have a look at the structure of the lean network. Then we will start talking about the different systems using the lean network. So this is uh, a simplified uh, structure of the lean network. So normally on the lean network, we have one master node, which is normally your control unit, and there are some slate nodes. So these are normally your sensors. And as you see, there is only one wire, which is lean network. So this wire between the master node, between the master node from here to this slave and the other one. And the important point is you don't need to separate lean line for each node, all right? So the master node is sharing only one line, all right? And as you see, these two are connected to each other. So this is gonna even, this is gonna uh, minimize uh, the need for wiring even more, all right? So this master node is gonna be your control unit. The slave node is gonna be your sensor, uh, which is working uh, with the master node. If you remember, the CAN bus. CAN, CAN bus is uh, some sort of uh, multi-master network. So all the units connected to the CAN network, they are, uh, they are a master node. So they can share the information and receive the information or request the information from the other control units. 
But on the lean network, we only have one master and multiple slave. Okay, one master node and multiple slave nodes. So for example, uh, if you are talking about the parking as a system, master node is going to be your control unit and the slave node is going to be all the parking sensors. Uh, and if you consider the front parking sensors and the rear ones, it's going to be more than 10. All right. So this is really uh, important to consider. A lean network can share the information up to 20 kilobits per second. But obviously on the CAN bus, we have 125 kilobit per second for the low speed CAN and one megabit per second uh, on the high speed CAN. So this one obviously is way slower than the other uh, kind of networks, but it's still much better than the uh, normal hard wire. And normally the voltage in the lean network is going to be 12 volt, is using a 12 volt. And normally this is uh, what we get if you check the waveform on the lean network. All right. Let's start uh, to have a look at uh, some systems using the lane network so uh, you guys will know how to find it in the uh, wiring diagram. So uh, on some cars, the communication between the driver door module and access door module is uh, via uh, CAN bus, low speed CAN bus. On some, but on some other cars, this communication is going to happen via lane network. Right, because this communication is not really critical, and uh, they can uh, they can reduce the cost uh, by using the lean network instead of the body cam. So what happens? For example, you have the power window. Uh, if you are trying to uh, if you are trying to open or close uh, the other window, or, or or for example, you are sitting on the driver's side, you are trying to open or close uh, the power window on the passenger side. Normally, when you are requesting from here, when you are trying to open or close the window from here, you are communicating to access door module or passenger side door module via lean network, right? So it means if we didn't have lean network, what was the situation? So you needed one line for uh, the Closing request when you wanted to uh, move the window up and for the down, right? For different requests, you needed one uh, individual wire, right? But right now, you are just using one wire, which is your network. So right now, your door module, so right now, your driver door module is communicating to access door module via lean network and really doesn't matter how many different signals they need to share with each other, they're going to use just only one wire, which is the lean network. Driver door module and access door module are using the lean network. And IMS ECU is exactly the power seat control module with, uh, uh, with the memory, okay? When you can uh, memorize the situation of the power seat. So as you see, the power seat control module is communicating to uh, IPM, which is uh, which is your fuse box, via lean network as well. So in normal situations, uh, these four control units needed to share so many wires, but now they are just using a normal uh, lean network. All right, guys. Next one is parking assist system. Uh, so, as you see on this parking asset system, we have the smart parking asset system control module right here. Four sensors on the rear side, four sensors on the front side, and we have two side sensors. We may have two other side sensors in the rear side as well, based on your car. And as you see, all these sensors normally need to communicate uh, directly to a smart parking asset system uh, to uh, send the information, to send the signal. But right now they are using just a lean network and the information is shared uh, at higher speed compared to the normal wire. But let's see how this lean network works on the real wiring diagram like this one. So this is the wiring diagram for smart parking asset system. And as you see, this is the control module up here. And right here we have two lean networks, lean one and lean two. 
So if you focus on lean two, lean two goes all the way to side sensors. So this is the side sensor. As you see, this one is side sensor. The other one is side sensor as well, right? So these two side sensors are connected to lean two and lean one with this color, this one is connected to all front uh, parking assist sensors, right? But they are going to the rear parking assist sensors as well. On the second page, we have again uh, lean two. We have again lean two for another two side sensors on the rear side because for this one we have another two side sensors on the rear side. And lean one again is connected to four parking assist sensors at the rear side. So it means lean one is connected to eight sensors. And lean two is connected to four sensors. So this is how you can find the lean network on the wiring diagram. And as you see, I just like a normal wire on the sensor. So right here on the sensor, you have these pin numbers, two, four, six, and five. Number five, with this wire color, yellow and orange, this one is the lean network and same on the other side as well. So what will happen if you have any fault on the lean network? I'm gonna show you one example from actually uh, what uh, I had one time on one car. Uh, I had uh, I had a Kia Sorento 2017 one time and the problem was car, uh, that car had a crash from the rear side, from the rear left. And apparently a uh, customer took the car to a panel meter. They just uh, replaced the rear bumper. Uh, and apparently they tried to remove and put, uh, remove the sensors and put them back on. But right after finishing everything, after finishing the panel beating job, uh, customers saw a fault on instrument cluster for uh, parking for a smart parking system. And when he brought the car to a workshop, when I checked the car, I had this fault, uh, C1360 uh, smart parking assist sensor lean short. And when I remove the rear bumper, this is the bumper when I removed it. You see this bunch of wiring right here? I removed the bumper and I, because I was just trying to see what's going on with the sensors, I removed the whole bumper. And this is what I found. You see these wires? This one and this one. So apparently that guy who was doing the panel beating job or uh, the one who replaced the rear bumper, they didn't know how uh, to fix the problem on a smart parking assistant system. Uh, they just cut the connector from one sensor and this is what you see. Because maybe the connector was broken after the accident or whatever because I couldn't find the connector anyway. They just cut this wire and one of them is the lean network uh, because I wanted to see if the problem is just right here or in any other place in the wi wiring. I just tried to uh, fix the wiring uh, just quickly, just like this. I put some pins on the, wire, on the, on the wires, okay, to secure them uh, inside the sensor to see if the uh, fault code is gonna go away. So after, uh, crimping these pins on the wires and inserting inserting them to in, into the sensor, everything uh, came, everything uh, started to work as normal, and we didn't have the fault code anymore because obviously technically they did uh, uh, they cut the wire and this uh, cutting the wiring caused some short circuit as well. Uh, so uh, we had this we had this problem on the lean network. So the next one is the rain sensor. As you see, uh, this is the wiper system. We have the body control module here, uh, front wiper, low speed relay, and the high speed relay. So obviously body control module is responsible to energize the relays based on uh, customer request. But when you have the rain sensor, it means anytime that you put the uh, wiper switch on uh, auto mode. What happens if if you're driving and it starts raining? Rain sensor rain sensor is going to detect that, and it will send the information back to the BCM to operate 
to energize the wiper relays. But in this case, as you see, we have only lean network. We have only lean network. Instead of having a couple of wires for communication between rain sensor and body control module, we only have one wire, which is the lean network uh, between the BCM and between the rain sensor. So anytime that uh, that is raining, after rain sensor detects that, it's going to share the information uh, to the BCM via this uh, Lean network and BCM is going to energize the wiper relay to operate the front wiper. And the last one for uh, this video is adaptive front lighting system or AFLS. So on this system as well, as you see, we have some actuators uh, in uh, front lighting system. Uh, for uh, for leveling uh, the headlight or uh, to adjusting the headlight when you're cornering. So for this one, you have one control unit, uh, some sensors to detect the vehicle height, and the actuator. So in this system, control module is communicating with the actuators using the lean network. So, so far we had the sensors, now we have the actuators. So for different mode of actuation, because the leveling actuator has different mode and even on the coronary. So instead of using all those wires for uh, actuating the actuators in front lighting system, we only have one in network. And as you see, even these two actuators are using very same uh, lean network. Okay, let's have a look at the wind diagram for adaptive front lighting system. And as you see, uh, this is the control module and we have the headlights uh, left side and right side in here. And as you see, we have two actuators, two actuators in here. So, uh, so all the control functions for uh, these actuators are controlled just using one lean network. So it's one lean network connected to the control module and it's shared between the left side and right side uh, headlights. So instead of using uh, so many wiring, we just have one lean network, which is quite reasonable. So this is a code that some, sometimes I, uh, I had uh, for the lean error on adaptive front lighting system. Normally when there is a short to battery or short to ground in the lean network. And surprisingly, a couple of times I had this fault because of the internal short uh, inside the headlight. So the control unit was okay, the lean network itself was okay, but after headlight replacement, everything was back to uh, everything was back to normal. So you need to keep it in your mind that sometimes uh, like like can, uh, we may have this fault on the can as well. Uh, internal problem or internal short uh, inside the control module on the CAN transceiver. We may have this fault on the lane network as well if there is any short, any internal short in, uh, in the slave node. All right, thank you very much everyone for watching this video. Please don't forget to uh, have a look at the other video for CAN bus network if you haven't watched it so far. Uh, and if you like this video, please don't forget to like it and share it with your friends.